Listen, HubSpot user, are you trying to have the cleanest HubSpot absolutely possible? Are you trying to make sure that you're organized with your objects and your properties? Well, then guess what? We're going to talk about maybe the one thing you're not using that you should. That's right. It's your boy, George B. Thomas from georgebthomas.com. Hey, you know what time it is. That's right. It's time to talk about property groups. Now, in HubSpot, you have the ability to keep your default properties and your custom properties in groups. Let's talk about this and how it kind of relates to something in real life that you may or may not remember. Have you been to a library recently? Ooh, anyway, if you think about how libraries are, you can go into the building that is the library. Inside the library, you have a ton of what? Books. That's right. Physical books that you can read and touch and flip the page. Anyway, I digress. Those books are all organized. They're organized by the Dewey Decimal System. But at a high level, you have fiction, nonfiction, all sorts of different categories that those books are in those categories. Otherwise, your library would be an absolute mess. And I have to ask, is your HubSpot hub an absolute mess? Because many times I've gone into HubSpot portals, I've gone and done an audit, and I look and I see only the default HubSpot property groups in there. Or even worse, I see a portal that nobody has been paying attention to the integrations automatically in a very bad way, adding property groups to their system. Hey, if this sounds like you, then let's stick around and let's roll that fabulous HubSpot tutorial footage. All right, let's start by heading into the settings in your HubSpot hub, and then we're going to head over to the left-hand side and we're going to see properties we're going to click on that properties and of course this is where you can see all of the objects any of your standard objects or your custom objects that you've created but for each of these objects let's just go contact properties for right now you're going to see this tab which is rarely used or well sometimes used but not by the user by the integrations if we click on groups remember this is kind of the fiction non-fiction the way that we want to structure or organize the properties for the data that we're going to pull in now here's a key note to think about this is for organizing your data not being able to visualize your insights that's right I have to point this out. If we're trying to view the insights like this many people in our database believe or do this amount of things, then we're going to look at HubSpot lists and HubSpot views. But if we're trying to structure or organize the properties, the information that we're going to collect then we're talking about groups. Let's dive back in. So what we're going to see here is, again, in contact properties or the contact object, we have collected form fields, contact information, conversational questions, conversion information, course information, email information, a bunch of different ones. But look at this. Eventbrite and Hub LMS have automatically created groups in here. This isn't something that I created in this portal. The integration automatically, in maybe not a good way, has created those groups and you'll see we have up to two pages so this might not be what we're looking for so the first thing is tip number one if you're looking for a way to just clean up your database come in here to the integrations maybe look for integrations that you're not using anymore and then actually clean out these groups or see if it even needs its own group like for instance right now we're not using eventbrite so what we can do is we can actually view the properties and we can say we want to actually Actually archive those properties I'm gonna go ahead and archive those we'll type in a two here and we'll archive now we can go back to the group we can go to Eventbrite and notice right here we can delete that group and so that is how you can delete groups and the properties inside those groups and so now we can hover over and we can hit delete we'll move these to contact information We'll move properties 
and delete the group. And now you'll see that that is removed from our groups area. So that's how you can remove or delete groups. Now, as far as creating a group, we can click and create group here. And in this case, what we're gonna do is we're gonna create an option for information. Now you might be wondering what types of information might we actually want to look at? Well, it depends. It depends and we're gonna talk about that in a second. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the option of contact segment data. So we'll put that in real quick and we'll hit save. So what this means is we can actually go to our contact properties, go to our properties and look for something that is about segmentation or a way that we would communicate differently with somebody. For instance, buying role might be one of those things. So we can click the more here. We can move to group and notice we're looking for contact segmentation data and we're going to go ahead and put that in there and we're going to hit save now did your eye see something i'm going to go ahead and hit save i'm going to go back to groups and notice we actually have one that is segmentation data and we have contact segmentation data uh-oh but notice how easy that was to spot because we are using groups. So we're gonna go ahead and go to page two. We're gonna look at segment data. We're gonna view these properties. We're gonna go ahead and move this uh, to a group and we're gonna move it to that contact segmentation data. We'll hit save. And as we learned before, what we can easily do is we can come in here and we can delete that group because now we have the one that is contact segmentation data data. So what are some other ways that you might think about using company contacts, deals, properties, and the groups for them? Well, you might think about your customer service team and maybe it's survey data or product usage data. Maybe it's your development team and it's temporary data or marketing data or order information. Maybe it's your operations team and it's actually around data hygiene or maybe it's around KPI data that you need. There's a lot of different ways, especially especially marketing. Again, we saw analytics. We saw analytics in here. We talked about segmentation. You can even go geographical, but there's a special little ditty that I really like to talk about. So one little thing you might think about is HubSpot is super powerful and you can bend it to your will. One thing I like to talk about is how you can create a simple landing page. You can create a simple form and you could create some properties that are actual questions that you want to ask on that form. And now what you can do is you can have a property group called survey questions. You then put those survey questions in that property group and you'll be able to get back to the questions easily and when other people might be working across teams to add survey questions they'll see the ones that you already have or you'll see the ones that they already have but we've created a simple little process of landing page hubspot form some properties and a property group to stay organized now back in this area again one thing that i need to restate is you can select the object and then select the groups that you have or have been created again it is about being able to edit the name of that group if you need to it's about being able to view the properties that are inside of that group and then if it isn't a default hubspot version you'll be able to delete those groups but here's the thing it's not only about staying organized you know you your books inside of your categories of your library that is the HubSpot library. I'm kind of jesting here, but it's about streamlining your process because if I were to go to marketing, lead capture, and forms, I could go into a form and notice here I have contact properties. If I open contact properties, contact information, yep, that's a property group. Social media information, yep, property group, and so on and so forth. And I can actually collapse these and get down to the properties that we've been dealing with in this tutorial. Are you using HubSpot for your business and buying role and easily get them into what I am trying to create? That's right. You're going to find these property groups in other places in HubSpot. So it's about organization and streamlining your process. And with HubSpot, yep, they've made it that simple. They've made it that easy. That's it, you happy HubSpot user. Well, you'll probably be happier if you use groups or property groups to be more specific. So if you are trying to do database cleanup, look at groups, 
look at the properties and start there. If you're trying to organize some processes around data and data management, make sure you're incorporating groups. If you're trying to streamline being able to find those properties in different HubSpot tools, then use property groups. And while you're figuring out a strategy that fits for your business around objects, properties, and property groups, remember to be a happy, helpful, humble human. Head over to georgebthomas.com and give it a visit. And of course, we'll see you in the next video.